Hey everyone, and sorry if my voice is a little bit off today, I'm still a little bit sick. But uh, I wanted to talk to you today about build systems. Last time we compiled a couple of libraries and uh, that took a little bit of manual effort. If you feel like you don't want to remember all the sequence of all those commands, then this lecture is gonna help you in that. Okay, as always, the special symbols are on the slide now, and all of the slides are available at the link below the video. So in order to explain how it all works, I will be working with an example. And this example is going to be basically just a very simple library, just like what we did in the last lecture. So for that, we will set up some C++ files. Now here we're going to have a header with some uh, function declaration. We're going to have a CPP file where we're going to have uh, the function definition. And finally, we're going to use this function in the main uh, CPP uh, to print uh, a hello world string to, or actually a hello string to the terminal. So nothing new and nothing fancy here. If you remember the last lecture, then you already know that you can compile this manually. The problem with that is that uh, we have to write many commands, and we have to write them in the right order. If we mess up this order, then nothing will compile, or it will compile wrongly, which is not what we want. The naive solution would be to write something like a bash script. We basically just put those commands into a single file, in sequence, and now we cannot mess up the sequence because the sequence is written into this file. But now imagine that we have to build many libraries and many executables, and uh, these files will grow. So this, uh, this bash file that we just wrote will grow immensely. We would like to avoid that, and uh, furthermore, if we want to change some configurations, then we would actually have to write a lot of bash code, and nobody wants to write bash code, believe me. And to avoid that, the smart people have uh, thought of build systems. And we will start with make. Make is the rudimentary build system. It's still pretty much standard uh, all over the world. There are other build systems right now, but uh, make is still a golden standard. You will see it all over the place. The reason uh, why it's a golden standard is because it's actually that simple. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit. So everything starts with a make file. Uh, it's a file that's called a make file. And uh, it basically has a bunch of commands and it has this kind of block structure uh, to it. So there is always a target and this target always has some dependencies. And then uh, to create such a target, we will have to execute some commands which will be the rest of this block. And by the way, if you are writing your make file, then make sure that you're using the tab characters and not spaces, because make files are very particular about this and they will complain if you try to use uh, spaces instead of, uh, instead of tab characters. So you're warned. Now after you write your make file, you just can write make target and it will execute all the commands with all the dependencies to build the target that you want. Easy, right? And there can, of course, be many targets with many dependencies all over the place. The cool thing about make is that while actually being pretty simple, uh, it still does some fancy things. For example, it will do nothing if your target already exists. And it assumes that a target is just a file. So if you create a file target, then nothing will happen. But not only checks that it exists, it also checks if it's old enough or new enough, actually. So, for example, if uh, one of your dependencies changes and now it's newer than uh, the target by timestamp, then it will know that it has to actually redo all the work again. It it's really a nice feature to not recompile things again and again. If you want to dive deeper into, into Make, then there is, a very good, um, there is a very good tutorial, and I leave the link on the slide here and in the description below. So if you really want to dive into Make, then uh, this, is your, this is your chance. But we are not interested in all of the details of Make. We just are interested in this to the degree that it helps us uh, compiling our code that we've already wrote. And we will follow the same example that I presented before with this tools library that just prints hello world. But now let's show how it looks like if we put it in the make file form. So if you just copy it over to your code, it will compile uh, the proper libraries. And let's follow along here. So the first target that you see is all. It's a default target that make always has. And uh, if you just call make, it will try to build this target. 
In our case, we, the only dependency for this all target is the main target. Now, if we follow up to the main, then uh, we can see that it relies on the main CPP and libblah.a. Um, so once we have those, we can actually build the main target. And we build it with the command uh, right under the main target block. And uh, now if you follow along uh, the other targets, which we won't do in this video, uh, you can hopefully easily see that uh, every single command is uh, assigned to a certain target and uh, every single target is a dependency to another target, which allows us to just call make in the, in the folder with this file and of course our CPP files and that should generate uh, our binaries, right? I really urge you to do that. So copy this file to the folder with your CPP files from before and call make and uh, then try to call make again and uh, try to see what happens then. Now, if you change one of the files, try to again see what happens then after you call make again. Will it rebuild? Will it not? Um, I think it really helps to just play around with this a little bit to understand more about how it works. Finally, you can always run make clean, which is our last target in this make file, to clean all of the files and uh, to start over. Now, we will not focus on make files too much in this lecture, um, and there is a couple of reasons for this. Generally speaking, make files, while being simple, they are actually pretty powerful, but they get pretty complex if you are trying to write a make file for a bigger project. And especially, they become complex uh, and finicky when you want to manage a couple of configurations. But my main gripe with make files is that they are not really abstract enough. They basically answer a question of how do I build those libraries? but they don't answer the question of what am I building at a glance when I open the make file. So there are other systems which are a bit better in this. The alternatives would be to use a completely other build system, something like Bazel or uh, maybe Ninja, which we maybe will cover uh, a bit later in the course, but uh, we will focus on using a build generator. It's like another level of abstraction it's like a build system that generates files for another build system. In our case, we will mostly be using CMake um, that generates make files. But more on that in the next lecture. Thanks for your attention today and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.